Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. And today, again, I am super excited to share with you guys another acquisition to my watch collection. And today, uh, this is kind of a watch where some of you who know me, some of you who might be, uh, have been watching me for a long time, whether, again, people watch me for different reasons, but for those of you who are interested in watches and watch collecting, um, a lot of you guys know me as like the Invicta guy, right? But I want you guys to understand, I and I hope you guys do after watching me for this long, I always defend Invicta, I always back up Invicta, I think Invicta gives you the most bang for your buck, but there's, but there's lots of really great brands out there. And there's a time and a place for different types and styles of watches. I really like to change it up. Some days I feel like wearing something big, bold, and over the top. Other days I like to wear something just really kind of what I would call, and don't, don't not, not to say that any Invictas are clean, but something just more smaller and a little more, uh, you know, downplayed, you know. Um, again, we wear watches, at least I wear watches, uh, for me and only for me. Is getting a compliment great? Do I like to share? Do I like to show them off? Absolutely. But I know which watches are going to get noticed. I know which ones are going to get compliments. I know which ones are going to draw attention towards myself, if that's what I'm going for, right? Ultimately, at the end of the day, it always comes down to wearing what I like and enjoying what I like. And if you're like-minded, then you might like this watch as well. Now, um, there's let me just first state, uh, there's a lot of guys out there who are against replicas, they're against fakes, uh, they're against homage watches, they're against Invicta. There's all kinds of people who are against all kinds of different brands, right, or different types of watches. Um, for me, I'm pretty open-minded with any watches out there. I know a lot of guys say, oh, don't buy a fake, don't buy a replica, you're supporting terrorism, you're supporting all these things. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I just really don't care um, because a lot of the people, a lot of that, that, that nonsense really just comes down to not really knowing the individual seller. Not every seller trying to make a buck from China, and that's where a lot of the time you have to get these things. Most people selling this stuff is really just trying to make a buck. Are there bad people in the world that, that you know, sell these things to fund terrorism, fund illegal activities? I'm sure there are, but, you know, at the end of the day, most of the people, in my opinion, are just honest, well, maybe not honest, because they are replicas, right? They are legal, technically. But there's a lot of people out there uh, who just, you know, just trying to make a buck. So I ultimately wear what you like. I'm not judging. If you like to wear fakes or replicas, if it makes you feel good to rock that, as long as you wear it in, in good health, you show respect to other people, um, you know, it's none of my business. Now, this is a homage watch, and I kind of like homage watches because the nice thing about a homage, you can still get the look of these really expensive luxury brands, which are, you know, for people who know watches, if you see a watch uh, on somebody's wrist and you're like me, I'm a watch guy, I'm always looking. I'm like, is it a Rolex? Is it an Invicta? Is it a Movado? Is it a Bulva? A Citizen? I'm just always interested in what people are wearing, but I don't judge. I don't really care if you're wearing an expensive watch or a cheap watch because ultimately it's your watch. Wear what you like, enjoy it. But there are some watches out there that I do like that are what we consider, uh, what I would consider luxury brands and overpriced brands. Uh, and one of those watches is a Patek Philippe uh, Nautilus, which is one that I'm going to be reviewing in a couple days. It's a homage to that. And of course, the one we're going to be talking about today is a D Dunn Royal Oak. First, I want to thank the seller of this watch. This is not a sponsored video. Uh, this is something I, I saw on YouTube. I saw another guy reviewing it, and I said, you know, I definitely, I definitely, I've always liked the Royal Oak. It's not a uh, huge over-the-top watch like you're going to get with an Invicta, but it's a clean, classy, what I would kind of consider like a business dress sort of watch. Again, remember, you can wear, um, and I don't mean to misspeak, you can wear a watch in any setting. It really just comes down to what you like and what you prefer and what you're all also your job may deem as acceptable. Uh, in some jobs out there, like some of my jobs that I've had, uh, one in particular, uh, you know, I kind of got away with wearing a lot of the big Invictus because they didn't really want anything to distract from other things and it was very strict. So it really just depends on the company. Um, you're always safe with a smaller business style dress watch. And I absolutely love the Royal Oak. Now a lot of snobs out there, a lot of over the top, over opinion people will even say the Royal Oak is a big gaudy watch. Um, it's really not, I believe this measures about 41 millimeters. I'll give you guys the specs on this in just a second. But for anybody who collects watches, who's interested in watches, you've probably heard of the Royal Oak. And that's what this is. This is a homage to the Royal Oak. Now the Royal Oak is gonna run you minimum about 20 grand. Uh, that's just going off the MSRP on their website. The cool thing about the Royal Oak is they make all different kinds of, uh, of variations, different finishes, different materials. Uh, they make them in different, you know, 
uh, genuine uh, gemstones, uh, diamonds. So there's a huge spectrum in what you're going to pay. Now, let me just tell you, when I look at what you get in, and, and some of you guys, uh, the Artemis Pagay, Royal Oak, some of you guys will say that I'm out of my mind. Uh, now, I personally, just to be very clear, I've never held one. Uh, I've never owned one. Uh, I just looked at high resolution pictures on, on the internet and you know looked at what other people said about them. But remember, watch collecting is very subjective and there's a lot of opinions. In my personal taste, there's not a watch in the world made of stainless steel that warrants a price tag of over 300 bucks. I'm sorry, it's just, there are, you know, there are watches with fine detail, you know, that are made, I say, with more attention to detail. The finishing, the fit, the way things go together, um, probably the movements are, you know, there's probably reasons on why a movement may be better, like maybe a Rolex movement's better than a Seiko NH35, which is in, uh, not this watch, but another watch I'm going to share with you guys next week. It's one of my favorite automatic movements. It's super cheap, really affordable, and it's a great, what they call a workhorse movement. I always hate that kind of catchphrase or that kind of title for it, but it's a good solid movement. And, and that's why a lot of companies uh, use that in their watches, right? It works. And I absolutely love the movement. And you know, but do I love the movement more than some of the other autos? Not really, because at the end of the day, they all do the same thing and they tell time. What I do like, I do prefer an automatic watch. I like the fact that you never, uh, unless something goes wrong or you have to have it maintained, which I don't worry about, um, you know, if you have to have a service, they are serviceable for the most part, most of them. Um, this is powered by a, what they call a Miyota movement. Now, uh, let me just first say, I want, again, thank the seller, uh, not be for sponsoring the video, but they did actually make me a deal for purpose of the video on a second watch. So I paid a little bit more, and they sent me uh, the uh, Patek Philippe uh, Nautilus homage, which you'll see in a different video. Again, this is the Royal Oak, and I encourage you to check it out. What's really interesting is when you look at pictures of this, um, you know, on the internet, it's it's exact. I mean, everything is per, is, is almost perfect on it. Um, now, again, I'm sure if you compare them side by side, you really it's just like my argument with like a Pro Diver and a Rolex. There are going to be differences, but they're not. They're going to be subtle differences. You're not going to compare a luxury brand like that that costs 20 grand to a watch like this and say, oh wow, that's a real piece of crap. It's just not going to happen. Now, if you compare a watch like this to or a watch um, like that, or even like this, to let's say your $10 uh, eBay special, yeah, you're going to notice a difference. When you're looking at solid materials like this, 316 stainless steel, um, you know, you, you're you're just getting a watch of quality. Um, this watch is absolutely fantastic, and for the price, it's 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 almost, again, when I say Invicta is the most bang for your buck, I consider this on par with your Invicta. This gives you a ton of bang for buck. So this, um, let's talk a little bit about this. So uh, as far as the seller's concerned, I want to just give the seller a shout out, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up. What I like about this seller, uh, and I'm not saying it's the only seller. There's not a huge, a uh, lot of. There's not a huge positive feedback. 98.4%, only 306 sales. But the seller is, you know, on top of answering questions. Uh, the communications completely open. And so a lot of times when you're ordering something directly from China, that's kind of a big, uh, you know, a big if whether or not a seller is going to be able to get back to you. I've had sellers that I've ordered stuff off DHgate and, and, and websites like that that really don't respond. And if they do respond, it's very short. Your questions aren't answered and you're just hoping that you want to file a credit card uh, charge back. Uh, you hope you get your product. You don't have to do that, right? So with this seller was fantastic. So I encourage you, there's lots of guys selling this on eBay. This seller has got a competitive price and they're going to give you the tracking number. You're on, I mean, a lot of times you'll get stuff sent airmail, which there's no tracking. So this seller sends trackable. The shipping time was pretty decent. I think it was about a week and a half, two weeks, which is pretty darn good coming from China. Um, and the quality of the watch is fantastic. Now, what's funny is that when I look at, if you want to get one, a replica, and this is, again, between you and your money, um, if you want to get one, what I believe is that when you look at DHgate and Wish and sites like that, they're selling these, um, you're going to find ones without any logos. They're not going to have the brand name D done in this case. Uh, so, But what you're going to be getting is basically a a, a replica, a fake, if you get an Armour's Pagay Royal Oak through those sites, about the same price, about 80 bucks is what I paid for this, 86.96 shipped. Um, you're going to be getting probably the same movement, but you're getting one that's been decorated uh, with the logos for Armour Pagay, and it's basically one-to-one -one replica, I mean, as far as what you're going to get from the Royal Oak. Now, I'm saying the quality, but again, that's a whole, totally different argument, totally different story, but as far as the look side-by-side, -side, you're getting all the logos, all the branding. 
Again, that's between you and your money and your own mor morals if you want to buy a replica or not. No, I don't, I'm not against it. It's just I prefer to buy ones. I just don't like to rock uh, fake things, you know. I'd rather just have a different brand and say, yep, it's a homage. It looks like the real look, but it's not. That's just for me, personal preference. I'm not saying I won't get one, uh, but it's... I like to kind of buy things based on my budget and based on my lifestyle. And uh, most people aren't going to look at a dude, you know, driving a, a you know middle middle class kind of car, uh, you know, like my Honda, my Jag, my Solara. They're all you know your your kind of middle of the road cars. You know, I I love them. I take good care of them. I have a middle class house, right? But you know, if you're living in a huge mansion, driving a Ferrari, and you're wearing an Armour's Paganurist. There's probably the chance that people are gonna look at that and be like, "That's probably real, not a fake." If I'm gonna wear that, let's say you're driving, you're driving an old '86 Firebird, living in a dumpy apartment, wearing a Rolex. People are gonna look at you and say, "You know, that's probably a fake." They're not gonna believe it's real because why would a guy live like that and then waste his money on, you know, spend that much money on a watch? So it just doesn't make any sense. You have to kind of buy things based on I think what you make where you live, what you drive, kind of keep everything. Now again, it's your money, buy what you want always, but this is just my opinion on, on how I like to spend my money and what I choose to buy. You could be different, nothing wrong with that. So with this, um, I think when you do get a replica, if you do get an Audemars Piguet replica, not a D-Dunn brand, you're pretty much gonna be getting the same watch, but same quality, same price, but it's not gonna be a homage, it's then gonna step and cross the line into a fake. Just keep that in mind. So I want, wanted the D-Dunn line. There's a couple different brand names out there. They're probably coming out of the same factory with different names. Uh, this one here, I saw a couple guys on YouTube reviewing it. Uh, they had good things to say about it, and from the specs, uh, it looked great. Now, the only thing I did get after the seller on, it says it comes with a Miota movement, and in the description, it's spelt correctly. Me, M I think it's, uh, let's see what they have here. Yeah, M-I-Y-O-T-A, which they... Uh, I think they've corrected the other listings. I'll have to double check because I am kind of a stickler. When you buy something, I, I don't want any kind of bait and switch BS. Only downside to this is that it says it's an autom Miota automatic movement. This is not a Miota because when you look in the description, it's got a Miota, but it's spelled M-I-O-T-A. Um, so they dropped the Y. Uh, and so what I think is this is like an inex a more affordable Seagull automatic movement, but I'm still waiting for the seller to tell me exactly what movement is in this. It may be just be a, a generic Chinese movement. Not really sure, not sure on longevity. Um, I would always prefer if it had the Seiko NH35 because that's an affordable, um, you know, great movement. You know that you're, you know what you're getting. With this, you're not really sure. Uh, so hopefully the seller does get back to me. If they do, I'll put an update in description, let you guys know exactly what the movement is. I'm guessing it's probably a seagull. But nothing wrong with that. I have seagull movements. They've been reliable, no issues. Uh, let's remember, this is not a NASA space shuttle. Uh, this is just, you know, the, the whole concept of automatic movements, or not concept, but the whole way of designing the technology behind automatic movements has gotten better and better. And whatever goes into a Seiko automatic movement, when you look at just a no-name brand movement, you know, they're not basically like trying to figure out how to make it. They just, they, they reverse engineer these things. That's why these fakes are, are coming out of China are so good. If you get a, a high-end super fake, it's almost impossible to tell the difference. So there's something to be said about China and what they're producing, and there's no junk coming out of there. I'm not saying you won't get a cheap, affordable, inexpensive one for if you're gonna spend 20 to $30, it's not gonna be on this level. When you get something like this, you're looking at pro diver level, in Victor Reserve level, uh, it's fantastic. So what do you get? You get 316L stainless steel. Um, you get a screwed down case back. Uh, they say you get a sapphire crystal. I haven't tested that. I don't really care. Uh, you get what I think is a Seagull automatic movement. 30, uh, 30 ATMs of water resistant. I believe it's 30 ATMs. Let me just double check that. Uh, make sure it's not meters. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Three ATMs are 30 meters. Um, and you get... Uh, 25 millimeter lug width, 42 millimeter case size. You get the naturally your standard, you know, 12 hour time, and then you get your day or the month. Um, what I love about this is you have your dual deployment push button clasp, uh, which is great. Uh, it's a milled clasp, not a stamped clasp. Nothing wrong with either, but uh, this just to me feels like it's a little bit better quality. Um, kind of like a like a more of a um, I guess a feature that's a little bit nicer, I don't know, like leather interior, right? Uh, cloth does the same thing, but I think milled is just a little bit nicer. Um, I love the fact that it's dual push button deployment. Um, this is something that Invicta doesn't do on a lot of their watches, they just use the friction. Uh, nothing wrong with that, haven't had any problems, but I feel like this is just definitely better. You get your D-Done logo on the back. 
I pop these in, whoops, we close that. So it's a little sticky, but not a bad, not bad at all. 316L stainless steel, again, exhibition window in the back. Um, generic, non-decorated rotor, um, not a big concern to me, but it's fantastic. I mean, it looks killer, it feels killer. My dad looked at it, we're probably gonna get him one because he liked it so much. Uh, just a really classy design. Um, def definitely, I think, a lot more attractive than your Submariners and a lot of your Rolex watches. Again, nothing wrong with that, I have plenty, but um, I think that if you're going to choose a watch in that kind of style, smaller style, I think this is a much nicer looking watch. Um, I like this so much that I am going to get the rose tone with the white face. I was eyeballing that as well. Um, I went with the stainless to, to, you know, you can't really go wrong with stainless and black. I will get another one of these. They're fantastic. Um, so I will say what I noticed, um, the only thing, negative thing I have to say about this watch is the, the crown. Uh, it is screwed down, of course, but it's a little bit gritty. But it, I noticed that in, uh, since I got it, it has worn in a little bit. I think there was maybe just a little bit of metal shavings, a little grit. Again, you're not probably not going to have that on really high-end luxury items. But if you want to pay $20,000 for a watch, then by all means, you can go ahead and pay that and not have to worry about that. Uh, for $86, this is a fantastic killer uh, D, um, um, uh, Patek Philippe. Sorry, I keep getting too confused. Not Patek Philippe, that's coming. <laughs> this is a, a awesome, awesome, awesome homage of the Royal Oak by Audemars Piguet. Uh, it is fantastic. I think it's a great watch, and I encourage you to check it out. Again, links are in the description. What's also nice about this too, which I was really surprised, um, threaded screws on your uh, link adjustments. Uh, so you don't have any micro adjustments on this, but you know, who cares? Um, it's never something I really worry about, uh, but it's great that they have threaded screws on this, and that's something you'll find on nicer watches. Uh, even the Invictus, you guys know how much I love them. Pretty much all, most of the Invictus that I have are all uh, friction pins, uh, if that's what you call them. You just kind of bang them out. I like the fact they did screws. Something you see a lot on Aragon watches. So it is a great looking watch. I love the way it hit the hits the light. Uh, the finish is absolutely fantastic. The whole thing is brushed. Um, you have a little bit of mirror polishing just around the bezel, but it is just a clean looking, uh, sh just a sharp looking watch. And I think that's why you know the Royal Oak is so popular because it just is a really nice looking watch. Uh, and again, I want to thank the, the seller. I, if I didn't mention it already, uh, you're looking at the seller's name is Don Tools. Um, they're straight out of China. Uh, again, you can get this watch in several different variations. You want to get the all black, uh, black with white face, yellow gold, rose tone, black and white face, silver uh, with the gold, with the um, black face, white face, or blue face. Um, I think this is just you really. Again, you can't really go wrong with um, with black and silver. Uh, but I will say the rose, like I said, it's really good looking. So that's about it. 42 millimeter case size. Again, not a small watch by any means. I kind of feel. For me personally, when I'm looking at a watch, because I do like bigger watches, uh, when I'm looking at watches, really, 42 is kind of like my bare minimum. If a watch is 38, and I do have a couple, um, you know, it's really starting to, to feel kind of frail to me. Uh, nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying anything bad about a 38mm watch. I just feel like it's starting to approach more of a female watch. Uh, so as a man, um, I have a 7-inch wrist. I weigh about 100 and what, 75 pounds, uh, about five foot seven and a half. So I just, again, it's personal preference. You can wear watches that are smaller. Ultimately, always wear what you like. I'm not saying anything bad about that. I want to be clear. But for me personally, um, I just like something with a little more size and something that gets noticed. And I mean, even though we get desensitized, 42 millimeter is not a small watch. If you're completely desensitized and you're wearing smaller watches like 38, I mean, you, you're desensitized the opposite side of the spectrum where it's like, man, 42 is going to be huge. So it is a great looking watch, guys. I mean, I absolutely love it. I think it's definitely, if you're a collector, I know a lot of times we have a hard time uh, with us Invicta lovers because, you know, every time you look at what a watch costs, uh, you're like, man, it's 100, 150 bucks. Man, you know, what, what can I get for with Invicta? And so a lot of times for me, you know, when I'm looking at these other watches that I want to add to my collection, it's just for the price, it's hard for me to steer away from Invicta because you just get so much bang for your buck. With this, you're getting a lot of watch for $86. And I really put this up against any pro diver produced. Um, you know, it is just fantastic. And in some regard, um, I think it's even nicer, again, than the pro diver. Just a great looking watch. So definitely check it out. Uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, I'm always here to help. Uh, drop me a comment, drop me an email. Um, my email address is in the description of every video. Uh, guys, I think it's just a great watch, and this is the kind of watch where I've said in the past, 
that if I was going to go to a job interview, I'd always kind of downplay it a little bit. You know, you want to go in sharp. I may not wear the, the, the sharp looking, you know, a flashy mafioso silver uh, graphite suit. You know, I may downplay it a little bit. Uh, you know, because unfortunately we do live in a judgmental world and a lot of times people just, <clears throat> you get it. So um, I would kind of keep it clean, keep it classy. It's a very clean, very classy looking watch and I think you guys will love to have this in your collection. If not, I'm going to get another one. I love it. Uh, Dad's definitely going to get one. He, he, he loves it as well. So if you are the kind of person who does want to, and again, I'm not dissing in any way, if you are the kind of person who does want to, uh, you know, maybe show off a little, like you have money and maybe, I, I, I'm not, again, not, no judgments. Uh, if you are the kind of person who wants to put on more of a show, you can get the same watch uh, in a replica version again. Not for me, but uh, you can get it, and I'll put a link in the description where you can get it through uh, D done, uh, through uh, you can get the D done, you can get it through DHK, and also through um, I forget the other website. I, I just started using some of those sites because there's another one coming in the mail, another homage watch uh, by it's not by um, oh man, what's the other really popular one? Uh, Pagani Design. I do want to get a Pagani Design. I will get one eventually. This is kind of like the same thing, but it's got the uh, gemstone bezel in the rainbow. Uh, it's a homage to one of the Rolex watches. I forget exactly which one, but that's coming in the mail. Should be here hopefully this week. Uh, guys, you know, there's something for everyone, and there's so many great watches out there that are just affordable. You really don't have to spend a lot of money to have something that looks good, that makes you feel good, and definitely, uh, I think this will definitely get noticed. It's a beautiful watch, guys. So thanks for watching the video. If you like the content, do subscribe to the channel. As always, if I can help you in any way, um, I got to roll right now because I got some ribs cooking, sous vide, smoke, and then I'm going to flamethrower those bitches. So they're going to be delicious. So guys, have a great weekend. Have a good uh, Labor Day and take care.